this oak tree and me, we're made of the same stuff. If you go back far enough, you'll find that we have a common ancestor. That's why our chemistry is so alike. Let's take a trip to examine this common basis of life, a voyage to investigate the molecular machinery at the heart of life on Earth, a journey to the nucleus of the cell. First, we need a cell. I uh, have trillions. I can afford to donate a few. The casual act of pricking a finger is an event of some magnitude on the scale of the very small. Millions of red blood cells are detoured from their usual routes, but most continue to cruise about the body, carrying their cargoes of oxygen to the remotest front. We're about to enter the living cell, a realm in its own way as complex and beautiful as the realm of galaxies and stars. Among the many red blood cells, we encounter a white blood cell, a lymphocyte whose job it is to protect me against invading microbes. It makes antibodies on its furrowed surface, but its interior is like that of many cells. Plunging through the membrane, we find ourselves inside the cell. Here, every structure has its function. Those dark green blobs are factories, where messenger molecules are busy building the enzymes which control the chemistry of the cell. The messengers were instructed and dispatched from within the nucleus, the heart and brain of the cell. All the instructions on how to get a cell to work and how to make another are hidden away in there. We find a tunnel, a nuclear pore, and approach to the biological holy of holies. These necklaces, these intricately looped and coiled strands, are nucleic acids, DNA. Everything you need to know on how to make a human being is encoded in the language of life in the DNA molecule. This is the DNA double helix, a machine with about a hundred billion moving parts called atoms. There are as many atoms in one molecule of DNA as there are stars in a typical galaxy.